Welcome to Father Leo's personal icon painting workshop. And we're here today, we're looking at the icon of the, what is it, Father Leo? The Nativity of Christ. Uh -huh. Or Christmas. The birth of Christ. So it's a, uh, a scene, in fact, the large one that I just started this morning has a long way to go. This is one I did a couple of years ago in acrylic, and uh, the very same content that's in this one will be in the big one. But the, the, the larger one is a, a different proportion. It's tall and narrower. This is a complete square. So uh, the positioning then is a little bit different, but basically the same. But I'm going to follow the same colors. I love making the uh, mountains in uh, blue and purple, sometimes green, and the mountain that has the cave of Christ's birth is brown. And the star that came over the Christ child is uh, not only painted in the icon, but it even overlaps it a little bit right into the frame. And here are the three uh, wise men on their way to come and worship the king. Here's Joseph down below, and Joseph is thinking about, my goodness, what's going on here? And there's the devil. Do you know how you can tell that's the devil? Because you can only see one eye. The good guys always have two eyes in an icon. The bad guys, one eye. So the devil, in the form of an old man with a beard, like me, is uh, telling Joseph, oh, all of this is... Just imagination. None of it's true. Don't believe it. Don't believe that she had a, a child uh, virginally. And so Joseph is thinking about this. And uh, finally, Satan leaves him. And, it, and an angel tells him, don't hesitate to accept Mary. So you have the two, uh, uh, what do they call them? Uh, uh, Midwife? Midwives, yes. They're washing the baby Jesus. So you've got a time sequence here. Here's the baby as an infant, and here he is a little bit older. And uh, so they're doing what any uh, mother at that time would do, and that is wash the baby. And then wrap him in swaddling clothes, like the Bible says. And there was an ox and a, and a donkey there. You notice that whenever you have Jesus with a halo around him, it'll always have... O on, the Greek letters for the existing one in it. And outside is Isus Christos, Jesus Christ. So you know who it is we're talking about. And Mary has Meter Theu, the mother of God. She's on a kind of a palanquin uh, after the birth, and she's looking over to Joseph. Ah, that poor fellow, he needs to understand something that's pretty deep here. Most wives don't have to ask their husbands to... Uh, make that much faith. And up here on the right you see two shepherds with their sheep and one of the angels is there announcing to them that uh, as we read in uh, the gospel according to Luke. And uh, heaven is full with the, the angels singing glory to God. And what else is there? That's, that's it. Uh, the way the mountains are made is kind of a standard way of uh, of making a mountain. In this case though you see the mountain it looks just not much more than a big pile. But that's the way we do icons. They're very symbolic. Iconography is symbolic realism. There's a realism there but the realism is symbolic of something. So that's how we do that. What I do when I'm starting a new icon is uh, of course I prepare the board with gesso. This is called MDF board. And it's uh, a good half, maybe a little more than half an inch thick. So it's very strong. And I paint gesso on both sides. That way it keeps it from warping. And uh, then I do my drawing with uh, little pieces of uh, willow charcoal. Mm. Because I can take a, some white uh, dry paper and uh, wipe it off and change it. 
So what I do is I just keep drawing until I've decided that's what I want. So I draw, erase a little, draw, erase a little. And when I've decided, well, that's the composition for it, then I start with uh, background things. Usually the first is the background of the uh, sky. And it's gold. It's a special kind of gold paint that has actual gold in it, gold particles. And then I paint the, uh, the mountains because they're part of the background. And uh, since, uh, as you see in this one, the middle one is brown, so I get a kind of a general tone of brown on the new icon, a general tone of blue on the one uh, mountain in the right. The mountain on the left, it's going to take a little bit more to make it more purple, but it's just laying in the basic ground colors. Father Leo, will yeah. you be showing any of these icons in the future? Oh, yes. The reason I'm painting this large one is so that it can be shown at a retreat that I'm giving in uh, October. It'll be on October the 11th, which happens to be a Saturday. And it'll be at the San Damiano Retreat Center. And that retreat center is up in um, Danville, about 45 minutes from my home here in Livermore. So, on that day, from 8.30 in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon, I'll be doing a retreat. But it's a special kind of retreat. Uh, sometimes you'll have a retreat that's uh, concerned with the Bible, which is excellent. A lot of Bible retreats. This one is a little different. Let me explain it this way. In Orthodoxy, we have what's called tradition. And under tradition is that which we hear, the Bible, the Word of God, and also Orthodox icon, which is what we see. So we not only hear the Word of God, we see the Word of God. Jesus being the uncreated, eternal Word of God. And you have the inscripturated Bible and the, uh, the painted icon. So icons are as I said, a uh, uh, symbolic realism. They're also called windows to heaven, and they're also called uh, theology in color. So the theology is the same in the icon and in the Bible. So here we're dealing with the, uh, the birth of Christ, so it's all related in the Bible. In Luke, and St. Luke, the Gospel according to St. Luke. So I always try to stay as close as possible to what the Bible says. And also, I uh, receive from tradition how iconographers have painted icons for hundreds and hundreds of years. This is an old model, the one I'm using. I tweak it a little bit, it becomes more and more my icon or my painting. And I love doing it because it keeps the Lord Jesus and all he has done for me in mind. And it also gives me the opportunity to minister to other people in a way that anybody can understand. Because in the retreat that I'm going to give, we make a distinction between meditation and contemplation. What I mean by meditation is what you understand with your mind as someone may explain to you. What's the meaning of this? Why is that there? Where does that come from? And so forth. Where is it in the Bible? All of that is part of my meditation. I do it in a loving, loving and heart full of faith attitude. But also, I want not only to meditate on this event, but I want also to contemplate the event. Well, what is contemplation? If meditation uses the mind a lot, contemplation uses the heart, the spirit. And when we are open to what God wants us to understand, we can gaze at the icon, gazing meaning to look at it, not to stare at it, but to look at it with love and faith, believing. So, 
Gazing is a very important part of my uh, retreat on October 11th. Okay? So how, how we can contact you and find out more information yes. and details. Please uh, go to my blog site, which is uh, Dovetail... What is it? Uh, uh, dovetail Icon... Dovetails. Dovetail Icons. Mm -hmm. Dot blog site, dot Com, or visit com. me, vi visit on your Facebook page. Also the Facebook page. How would they get there? Uh, we'll, th that'll be, just look for Leo Aerosmith. Good. And also you can email me at fr.leo, that's Father Leo, at comcast.net. Or Outlook. Or, same thing fr.leo at outlook.com. Either one. All right. Thank you very much, Father Leo. This is really great and, and enlightening. Thank you again. Don't forget to sign up for this retreat. Thank you.